Stardust is a cooperative game about keeping a space station operating while you complete your research mission. You have a list of mission objectives to carry out, but also every turn the ship takes damage that you need to stay on top of or parts will break down and you need to find time to rest or the whole thing will get away from you. Uh, in the box should be eight of these square room cards with eight matching damage cards, four player pawns, four sets of six player cards, four player reference cards, 12 objective cards, 16 red damage cubes, 10 white spare part cubes, and 2 blue objective cubes. All of the cards of the same size should be mixed up together when you get it, so separate those out first. To set up the board, you take the cockpit room and the engine room and you put them at opposite ends of the play area. Set the solar panels aside for a sec. Then you shuffle the remaining rooms together and lay them out between the cockpit and the engine in a line like this. Wherever the airlock ends up, put the solar panels next to it. Make sure that habitation, comms, and the workshop are showing the right side depending on whether you're playing with two players or three or more players. Now, everyone picks who they're playing. I'll go over each character's ability later. You take their reference card, which has a general reference on the back, and their cards. Uh, if you're playing with four players, take the card that has this note on it and put it back in the box. All your other cards you just keep in your hand. Take their pawn and put it on the matching starting place on the ship. Now, you set up the board with your starting objectives and damage. Choose a number of objectives based on your desired difficulty and game length. Six for an introductory game, eight for standard, and ten for pioneer difficulty. Shuffle the objectives and put any you're not using back in the box. Turn the first objective off the deck and place the two blue objective cubes on the rooms named on the card. Uh, for damage, shuffle the deck and turn three cards off it. Put one damage cube each on those rooms, then return the cards to the deck and shuffle again. Get used to shuffling this deck a lot, by the way. Take one card from the damage deck and leave it face down. That's important. Play starts with the player who's closest to the front of the ship, so if Concord's in the game, they always go first. Uh, your turn has two steps in it. In the action step, you play a card from your hand and take that many actions. These actions can be moving to an adjacent room, completing an objective, using a part to repair damage, or using a room for its unique use. You can do these as many times as you like, in any order as you like, as long as you're only doing a number of actions equal to the card that you played. So if you play a 5, you can move 5 times, move 3 spaces and use the workshop twice, you get the idea. Any actions you don't spend are wasted. In the damage step, reveal that face down damage card and put one damage cube on that room. Oh no! Then, draw a new damage card to place face down and shuffle the old one back into the deck. That's your whole turn! You keep doing this until either you win by completing all of the objectives, or you lose. Uh, you lose when you need to place a damage cube and play a card, but you can't do that because you've run out. Movement is mostly straightforward, but the ship is cramped and you'll need to be careful not to get in each other's way. Each room has either one or two spaces on it, and only that many players can stay in that room at a time. If a room is full, you can pass through it, but you can't stop on it. You can't end your turn there, and you can't use the room. You can double back on full rooms, and there are reasons why you might want to do that that I will get to in a second. Removing an objective cube is an action. Just boop, gone. That's it. Uh, once you've cleared all the blue cubes off the board, someone needs to go to comms to get the next objective. Uh, you can only have one objective active at a time, and when you complete the last objective, the game ends immediately. To repair damage, you need to go to the workshop and print parts. The part goes on the card, and when you move, you can bring parts with you for free. You can pick them up and drop them off at any part of your journey, which is why you might want to double back on full room sometimes. But you can only carry one part at a time. When you repair damage, you take a part from the same room and remove damage. One part, one damage. Uh, if you run out of part cubes, you just can't print more parts. <laughs> Use some of them, you're probably fine at that point. These rooms have special actions that you can perform by spending an action on your turn. When you use comms, you reveal an objective card, as long as there are no objective cubes on the board. When you use the workshop, you place a white part cube on it. When you use habitation, you pick up all of your discarded player cards, and your action step ends immediately, so try to do this near the end of your turn. When a room has one damage cube on it, nothing happens. When it has three, it breaks, which is bad. Here's what happens when things break. Broken life support means that you can't use habitation to refresh your hand. Air and water aren't cycling. Broken comms means you can't call home to get your next objective card. Uh, a broken airlock prevents you from going out to the solar panels or, distressingly, getting back in if someone's already out there. Uh, a broken workshop can't produce parts. It's fairly simple. Uh, broken habitation can't be used to refill your hands. 
When the cockpit breaks, you can't do objectives on the engines, and when the engines break, you can't do objectives on the cockpit. One controls the other. Note that the broken room doesn't prevent you doing objectives on itself. When the solar panels break, you get all of the other penalties except the airlock. So, no hab, no comms, no new parts, and no objectives on those fiddly end parts. There isn't anything special that happens when a room has more than three damage cubes on it, but there's no limit to how much damage a room can have. Uh, oh boy, I hope you didn't need that, because that's going to need a lot of fixing. Fortunately, to help you out, each character has a unique ability. Concord can skip over empty rooms when moving. You spend one action, and then keep going in a straight line until you stop or hit something. You can pick up and drop off parts for free while numing up and down the spaceship like an indoor dog, but this one action movement ends when you enter a room with another player in it, when you want to do anything else in a room, like fix stuff, uh, use the room or do an objective, or when you enter and leave the solar panels. Don't worry, everyone else's is way easier to get your head around. <laughs> Rosetta can just carry as many parts as she likes. When Zambuco ends his turn on a usable room, he can use that room once for free before the damage step. Uh, you can't use this bonus action for objectives or damage, it's only for the use room action. Aurora's ability is passive. The room she's in does not take damage. If you draw that damage card on that turn, no damage gets placed that turn. Excellent. And that's pretty much it. Remember that this is a cooperative game. Uh, you should freely discuss ideas with each other, but the player whose turn it is decides what they do. Don't touch anyone else's pieces without permission. And sometimes the best thing you can do on your turn is set your friends up so they can have a better turn. But while I've got you, let's talk about the expansion for Stardust First Steps. It adds three modules, two simple ones that you can drop into any old game of Stardust, and one major task of a thing. The box should contain five square Mars cards, three room cards, the lander, the new airlock, and habitation cards, a damage card for the lander, two red damage cubes, two black sample cubes, one regular objective card, and seven brown Mars objective cards, a flag token, a matching player pawn reference card and a set of six player cards, this punch board with nine chips, I've already punched mine out, and a little red bag. Wolfram is a new playable character. He lets you play the game with five players. The setup is identical to how it is with four players, and you treat anything that says four players as four or more. Also make sure to use this habitation card that has a space for Wolfram to start in. Uh, Wolfram's power is that he can spend an action to have another player pick up one of their own discarded cards, as long as he's sharing a room with them. He cannot use this power on himself. The damage chips is just a component swap. It's easier to use if you're playing by yourself, or don't mind the smaller chips, or if you just don't like shuffling this deck of cards so often. They come in this chipboard and are a little sooty from the laser cutting, but that just wipes right off. Put all the chips into the bag. During the damage step, instead of drawing a card face down and flipping it on the following turn, you pull a chip from the blag, bag, blag, bag, place the damage immediately, and then only return it to the bag after you draw the next one on the following turn. You can use either method with either set of components as long as the last turn's card or chip is set aside whenever a new one is drawn. You play the Mars Landing when you want a longer, more challenging game. It extends the game by 20 to 30 minutes, uh, inserting a whole new set of objectives into the middle of the game, and it divides the crew, placing one or two crew members on the surface of Mars. Here's how it works. To set up for the Mars Landing, you set up the ship as normal, but use the airlock that comes with the expansion and put the lander at the bottom of it opposite the solar panels. Take the five Mars cards, shuffle them, and arrange them face down like this, opposite the lander. Then take the Land on Mars objective and put it into the middle of the deck. Don't shuffle it in, it goes in the middle. Then take your Mars objective cards and choose how many you want to play with. Three for Standard, four for Pioneer, and five if you really want to challenge. <laughs> put the Lander card into the damage deck, or the Lander chip in the damage bag if you're using the chips, and add the two red damage cubes that come with the expansion to the pool. Make sure to take these out afterwards when you're not playing with the Mars Landing Module. When the Land on Mars objective comes up, you also reveal the first Mars objective. Now somebody needs to go to the surface of Mars. To get there, one or two players go to the lander, and another player needs to release it by using the airlock. When they do this, the lander moves with everyone and everything in it to this space on the surface of Mars. To return the ship to orbit, you spend an action using the lander, moving it back to the airlock. If the lander is broken from damage, it can be released, but it can't be launched, and this can happen while docked or while landed. The airlock breaking does not affect the lander or releasing it. On the surface, the move action lets you move to any adjacent card, including diagonally. 
Concord can move to any space on the surface by power of zoomies. Black sample cubes can be picked up and put down for free, much like parts. And like parts, Rosetta can pick up all of them at once if she wants. The flag is also treated like a part, but you only place it on the lander when the plant the flag objective comes up, otherwise it can stay in the box. Remember that Zambuco can't use his bonus action to complete objectives, and Aurora only protects the lander if she's on the lander room card specifically. Surface tiles have infinite player capacity. You still take a damage step on your turn when you're down on the surface, and you can't refill your hand down there, so be quick. When you complete a Mars objective, you reveal the next one immediately. The land on Mars objective is complete once this mini deck is clear, and you can get the next main objective by activating comms as normal. And that's Stardust and the First Steps expansion. <laughs> you can try the game for free on Tabletop Simulator, which includes First Steps. There's also a Unity version of the game by Cool Gabriel, which is available on Itch. And you can buy them at The Game Crafter, which links in the description. Thanks for watching, good luck, and fly safe! I'm not Scott Manley. <laughs>